A very warm welcome to all to commemorate India's 75th year of independence and encourage young minds to choose science and technology as a career option. The Regional Center for Biotechnology is organizing a webinar series as a part of DBT Science Hetu program. Today's webinar is prepared by our young and bright MSc students, Ananya and Anushka. They will showcase the life and works of eminent scientist, Dr. Bheva Chaudhary, who was the first Indian woman in the field of energy physics. And you will hear more about her story from the presentation that is made by the students. In addition to that, we will present a virtual tour of RCB campus and its facility, which will be followed by a question and answer session with Dr. Karthigya, who is assistant professor at RCB. Now, without further ado, let's invite our team for the presentation. Thank you. The pictures of all the legends here must be making us all beam with pride. After all, these pictures be a testimony to the fact that India has been the epitome of science since time immemorial. From Dr. Jagadish Chandra Bosch, who for the first time proved that plants too have life, to the missile man of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Indians have never failed to prove their worth in the field of science and technology. But did it occur to you that whenever we try to think of a famous Indian scientist, our mind usually portrays the picture of a male scientist? How many of us know about women scientists, especially in the male-dominated field of physics? The reason behind this is perhaps very starkly noticeable. All around the world, particularly in India, history is replete with many instances where achievements made by women in science and most other fields in general had been hugely underestimated and marginalized and due credit denied to them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the ID75 event to commemorate the 75th year of India's independence. Join us in our endeavors to take you through the life and the journey of one such unheralded star of Indian science. The Forgotten Jewel of High Energy Particle Physics Dr. Bibha Chaudhary Bibha Chaudhary was born in the historic year of 1913, the same year Rabindranath Tagore was awarded the 1913 Nobel Prize for Literature, becoming the first Asian to be bestowed upon by this honor. Bibha was born at a time when education for women and gender equality were topics that were brushed under the carpet in a male-dominated society harboring an indifference to women in general. However, if eventually Bibha would go on to inspire hundreds of girls to walk the path of education and hence enlightenment. Bibha's father, Bonku Bihari Chaudhary, was a doctor by profession. They were zamindars of Bandarhati in the district of Hooghly in Bengal. Bonku went on to marry Urmila Devi, who happened to be the daughter of a Brahmo missionary in Borishal, presently in Bangladesh, who were staunch followers of the Brahmo doctrine. To get Urmila's hand for marriage, Bonku had to accept the Brahmo doctrines and, as expected, was shunned by his orthodox Hindu family. Bibha was the third child in a family of five daughters and one son. 
Bibha's eldest sister Roma Chaudhary was a teacher at Brahmo Balika Vidyalay in Kolkata. The second sister passed away at a very early age and no records of her had been found whatsoever. Leela Chaudhary briefly worked at the tea board of Kolkata and retired as a teacher of Jadavpur Vidyapeeth, Kolkata. She also trained as a Montessori teacher in England. Uma Chaudhary was a PhD degree holder in social psychology. After obtaining her degree from the US, she secured a job in the health department of West Bengal government where her work focused on the social aspects of aborigines like Jarwas, Santhals and others. Ranjit Chaudhary worked as a sales manager in English Electrics. He was the only son of the Chaudhary family and was an engineering graduate from Jadavpur University. Bibha's early life and early education were heavily influenced by the Brahmo Samaj which had its proponents in societal reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Roy and Dada Bhai Nauroji and eminent figures from the famous Tagore family like Maharshi Devendranath Tagore both Bonku Bihari Chaudhary and Urmila Devi were members of the Brahmo Samaj that worked tirelessly for the cause of education rights for women and their social upliftment thus it does not take us by surprise that all the children of the chaudhary family were highly educated and achieved great heights in their respective careers The Brahmo Samaj advocated social, political and religious reforms and encouraged women towards attending educational institutions which were out of bounds for contemporary women. This greatly fueled Vibha's education and she underwent schooling from Bethune School, Kolkata, the oldest all-girls school in Asia. This was just the stepping stone of her phenomenal journey ahead. Bibha obtained her bachelor's degree with honors in physics from Scottish Church College Kolkata established in 1830 this college has housed eminent personalities like Swami Vivekananda and Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose keeping up with her tireless pursuit of knowledge she went on to complete her master's degree in physics from the University of Calcutta in 1936 She was the only female student in her batch of 24 students a stark reminder of the skewed gender proportions in a field dominated by males since time immemorial yet with her razor sharp focus she managed to make her mark Tireless works by the Bose Chaudhary duo at Bose Institute led to significant contributions to the discovery of two heavy subatomic particles which they named the mesotrons or mesons which were later on branded to be the pi meson and the mu meson. DM Bose and Bibha started using Ilford R2 and new half-tone photographic plates for the study of cosmic rays at different altitudes. They exposed photo plates to cosmic rays for 5 months. After painstaking experiments, they observed double tracks on the photo plates which had not been mentioned before. from the analysis of the data they concluded that heavy ionization tracks were mainly due to mesotrons till then the existence of mesons were hypothetical and the discovery of these using photographic plates subjected to cosmic ray exposure went on to be one such groundbreaking discovery of the contemporary times 
the duo went on to publish three consecutive papers in the world-renowned journal Nature. Immediately after completing her master's, Bibha started working under the guidance of scientist incognito Dr. Devendra Mohan Bose, Palit Professor of Physics at the University of Calcutta. D.M. Bose was the nephew of one of the most celebrated scientists of all time, Dr. Jagadish Chandra Bose. Bibha overcame her first career setback through her display of scientific ingenuity and passion that convinced an initially reluctant D.M. Bose to absorb her into his research team. Later, in 1938, when Professor D.M. Bose joined the Bose Institute as its director, all his students, including Bibha, moved to their lab over there. Bibha's first research paper was on the studies of nuclear disintegration by the photographic plate method, the disintegration of samarium nucleus by cosmic rays. This work was carried out in the high altitude Sandakfu at a height of 3600 meters in May 1938 and the exposed photographic plates were observed for possible track development in June 1938. In the article published in Nature, she mentioned that there are distinct advantages of using photographic plates over the conventional Wilson cloud chambers which were used to visualize ionized particles. The time of exposure can be extended over several months and consequently the probability of signatures of seldom occurring processes such as nuclear disintegration can be increased. In 1940, Bose and Choudhury sent another paper to Nature which showed that photographic plates were suitable for the detection of cosmic rays and their works were in strong agreement with previously stated hypothesis in the field of research. It was titled Origin and Ionization of Heavy Particles Detected on Photographic Plates Exposed to Cosmic Rays and completely complemented the works of stalwarts in the field, namely Werner Heisenberg and H. Merlebnitz. Bibha's third nature publication dealt with the estimation of the masses of the secondary particles with heavy ionization tracks. A subatomic particle with mass 300 times that of the electron was discovered and another subatomic particle with mass 200 times that of an electron was discovered as a result of this research. The publications won Bose and Choudhury international accolades and encouraged Bibha to continue her work in the field with an indomitable spirit. An obvious outcome was Bibha's next publication as a single author in the transactions of the Bose Research Institute on March 31, 1942, wherein she meticulously dealt with the relation between energy range and mean grain spacing along the tracks of alpha particles and protons. 
However, the low quality photographic emulsion plates did not produce good enough results for further research and eventually Choudhury and Bose had to give up their pioneering experimental investigations due to non-availability of sensitive emulsion plates during the times of the World War II. As destiny would have it, seven years after this discovery of mesotrons by D. M. Bose and Bibha, Cecil Frank Powell at the University of Bristol, the United Kingdom, made the same discovery of pions and muons and further the decay of muons to electrons using much higher electron sensitive plates using the same technique as used by the Bose Choudhury duo. This won him the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1950. He had used C2 and G5 sensitive plates, but his techniques were pretty much the same as those used by the Bose Choudhury duo in their discovery. It is unclear why Bibha, despite her significant works in India, did not go on to pursue her PhD degree from the University of Calcutta. One of the main reasons seems to be the lack of proper research materials at Bose Institute during the times of the war, as reported by Nature. After resigning from the Bose Institute, Bibha joined the Cosmic Ray Laboratory of PMS Blackett at the University of Manchester at the end of the year 1945 at a time when studies on extensive air showers in cosmic rays were one of the most important investigations raging the world of particle physics. Incidentally, Blackett was an advisor to then Prime Minister Nehru on matters relating to the organization of scientific research in newly independent India. Bibha was finally awarded her PhD by the University of Manchester. In her thesis, titled Extensive Air Showers Associated with Penetrating Particles, published in early 1949, she presented a review on the origin, spread and penetrating components of extensive air showers. Additionally, she dealt with the distribution of angular deviations of shower particles from the vertical direction. A local newspaper, the Manchester Herald, reported her work in 1949 under the title Meet India's New Woman Scientist. She has an eye for cosmic rays. In the interview which formed the basis of the article, Bibha said, Women are terrified of physics, that is the trouble. It is a tragedy that we have so few women physicists today. In this age when science, physics particularly, is more important than ever, women should study atomic works. If they do not understand how it works, how can they decide how it should be used? I can count the women physicists I know, both in India and in England, on the fingers of one hand. Bibha was always keen on influencing other women of her times to take up physics and work with equal gusto as their male counterparts.
owing to her national and international repertoire in the field of cosmic ray research dr homi jahangir bhaba saw in bibha a competent scientist and included her in a group of particle physicists at tata institute of fundamental research mumbai upon her return to india at tifr she carried out extensive research on k mesons and guess what she was the first ever female scientist to be recruited by tifr during her tenure at tifr she was extensively involved in the famous kolar gold field anti neutrino experiments performed in the 1960s using an indigenously developed detector that was placed 700 feet under the ground and was operated in conjugation with the extensive air shower array of tifr above ground interestingly a defunct gold mine like the kolar gold field was the area of choice for the experiments because the depth of the mines allowed muons to be studied in a rather favorable environment than at sea level also the scientists here could study the energy spectrum and angular distribution of muons even at very high degrees one of bibha's very close students y c saxena and her colleagues in the kolar goldfield experiments remember her as being not only an excellent particle physicist but also a person who was good at heart he reported that she worked out the modalities of the experiment with the tifr group arranged the site underground and also rented a bungalow for our stay at kolar gold fields before she asked all of us to move there bibha's extensive work at tifr rightfully earned her an invitation to participate in the prestigious international conference of elementary particles in pisa italy in 1955 she also participated in the third national sstd the solid state nuclear track detectors and their application conference at guru nanak dev university amritsar in march 1983 After resigning from TIFR Bibha joined the Physical Research Laboratory Ahmedabad under the able guidance of its director Dr Vikram Sarabhai the Choudhury Sarabhai duo had planned to set up a new experiment on radio frequency emissions associated with extensive air showers at Mount Abu Rajasthan but sarabhai's untimely demise brought this idea to a standstill and then the research idea had to be dropped with the appointment of a new director at prl this course of research was sadly changed altogether when professor d n kundu the then director of shaha institute of nuclear physics kolkata visited prl in 1976 he met bibha and realized her intent to continue high energy particle physics research consequently he suggested bibha that she could join sinp after retirement So when Bibha took voluntary retirement from PRL and returned to Kolkata she joined as a guest researcher at SINP and continued to be associated with high energy particle physics along with association with other prominent institutions like the University of Calcutta 
and the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. From 1980 to 1990, Bibha and her team went on to publish 15 high impact research papers. Bibha selflessly immersed herself into the worship of science, churning out high quality research work including her final research paper that was published in Nature in 1990 until she breathed her last in the Broad Street residence in Kolkata in 1991. Bibha has several exceptional achievements attributed to her. The leading lady of India's cosmic ray research, Bibha was the first Indian woman to obtain a PhD in physics. She was the first woman particle physicist of India as well as the first woman scientist to be recruited by TIFR. As a rightful tribute to her unfathomable achievements, The star HD 86081 was rechristened Bibha by International Astronomical Union. The significance of Bibha's work is humongous in the field of modern physics research. In physics, cosmic ray research allows for monitoring radiation doses on astronauts in space. to make space flights easier the study of particle physics helps carry on research with radiation therapy used in cancer treatments it helps to get an idea about the energy samples outside of the solar system the other applications include study of changes in atmospheric chemistry when secondary particles that are produced in air showers reach earth the study of effect of lightning on electronic devices the study of roles in climate change and mass extinction factor among many others However, despite working with some of the leading lights of the physics fraternity in India and abroad, Bibha remained as the unheralded star of Indian science. Dr. Bibha Choudhury received neither any formal public recognition in her lifetime nor any prestigious awards or major scholarships from any of the renowned scientific societies and research councils. Hers is an unfortunate story of an unsung researcher who missed the Nobel Prize by a whisker despite her groundbreaking pioneering studies in the field of particle physics. Not long ago, the Indian Academy of Sciences Bangalore brought out a book titled Leelavati's Daughters: The Women Scientists of India, but it did not feature Dr. Bibha's name. despite being a tribute to 100 great women scientists from the victorian era till present day in the book scientifically yours selected indian women scientists bibha was again denied due credit of her works it is surprising that despite portraying the life of 13 greatest indian women scientists bibha was left out of the list from bibha's times of a gender biased scientific society to women scientists earning accolades solely based on their outstanding contributions in their work front india along with the rest of the world has come a long way in heralding its women and unbiasedly acknowledging their stellar roles in their respective fields professor rohini godbole Director, Center for High Energy Particle Physics of IISC, was quoted saying, "I will look forward to a day when people won't say I am a women scientist. Instead, they would say 
I am a scientist. We are steadily inching closer to her dreams and hopefully Bibha's brilliance and her commitment to science will keep inspiring generations of women to come and make their mark. They will ensure that stars like Bibha Choudhury will not be lost from the pages of history ever again. I hope you enjoyed and admired the journey of Dr. Bhiva Chaudhary. She is indeed a true inspiration and a pioneer in the field of particle physics. Now uh, let's take a quick tour of RCB campus and its facility. And post that tour, you are welcome to ask any queries regarding the RCB program. Please type in your questions in the comments box. Thank you. Regional Center for Biotechnology is located in a tranquil environment along the Gurugram Faridabad Expressway. It is an autonomous institute established under auspices of UNESCO by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. The primary focus of RCB is to provide world-class education, training to create high-quality human resource in biotechnology and conduct innovative research at the interface of multiple disciplines. The infrastructure at RCB has developed at a rapid pace since inception of the institution in 2010 with state-of-the-art research labs, teaching labs, innovative classrooms, central instrumentation facilities, small animal facility, biosafety level 3 facility, a biorepository and state-of-the-art advanced instrumentation facilities like the Advanced Technology Platform Center and a bio-incubator which serves as a reservoir for incubating ideas in the area and help them reach commercialization. There are various areas of research in RCB. The research group under the area titled Cell Biology, Development and Behavior focus on unlocking the secrets of cells how they divide and how stem cells develop into muscle in addition to studying the cellular and molecular origins of how organisms behave. Areas of agricultural biotechnology aim to tackle some issues by harnessing the existing genetic diversity in plants and their inherent capacities to adapt to abiotic and biotic stress conditions in order to develop innovative and durable methods of crop improvement. Groups working on infectious diseases, both bacterial and viral, aim at developing novel therapeutic strategies against infectious agents. Using tools such as mass spectrometry and microscopy, these researchers will shed light on cellular and molecular basis of bacterial infection and the response of the human host towards these infections. They are trying to find novel solutions to protect the people against diseases such as chikungunya virus, Japanese encephalitis virus and dengue virus. Protein structure and design groups are structural biologists 
who have a molecular view of life and use cutting edge methods like macromolecular x-ray crystallography or cryo electron microscopy to imagine biological molecules in their functional state. This information is used to develop novel therapeutic strategies against pathogenic bacteria and viruses and for protein engineering to prepare molecules with desired properties. Researchers at RCB are also working towards developing innovative biotechnological applications such as novel drug delivery systems, new diagnostic tools, novel engineered protein with improved desired proteins and improved methods to obtain desired products in large scale. These researchers subject laboratory and clinical samples to cutting-edge microscopy. Proteomics and genomics methods coupled with flow cytometry to shed light on the etiology of disease and utilize this knowledge to identify solutions to these disorders. The quality of research conducted at RCB is excellent with faculty winning top honors like the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar, the National Bioscience, the Innovative Young Biotechnologist Awards and the Ramanujan, Ramalinga Swami and DBT Welcome Alliance Fellowships. Since research-based learning is the hallmark of RCB, the academic programs here are deeply enmeshed with the research programs. The academic programs fulfill RCB's code mandate to provide quality education and training in the area of life sciences and biotechnology. The PhD program in biotechnology is for students who are interested in working at the interface of multiple disciplines to find novel solutions for problems in health and agriculture. RCB has recently started integrated PhD program in biotechnology offered to students with graduate degree in any discipline of science from India and abroad. The program provides extensive learning opportunities in the broad field of life sciences and biotechnology. RCB has also recently initiated an interdisciplinary doctoral programs in the area of biostatistics and bioinformatics through collaboration with the global pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline GSK being conducted in partnership with other institutions by creating a virtual faculty pool. The focus of this program is on creating specialized manpower for the healthcare industry. As an outreach activity, RCB also offers research training programs for research-driven undergraduate and postgraduate students of science from various universities. Trainees get a realistic experience of several facets of modern biological research that sets the tone of their embarking on a research career. Throughout the year, RCB hosts and organizes regular academic events like the RCB Bioimaging School, national and international conferences, seminars, symposia and training in the frontier area of basic and applied sciences in topics such as infectious diseases, drug discovery etc. to disseminate advanced knowledge, exchange ideas, foster national and international collaborations, student exchange and networking opportunities. RCB also holds scientific communication and communication workshops for the benefit of young scientists in India. RCB has a fully functional library and houses 500 scientific textbooks and 100 administrative books in multiple copies. In addition, an electronic library provides access to a vast range of primary literature in the form of peer-reviewed journals and reviews. RCB offers faculty residences and excellent students' facilities including on-campus air-conditioned hostel accommodation, modern library, meeting rooms, seminar rooms and auditorium. The hostel and student facilities are conveniently located and only a short walk away from the classrooms and laboratories. In addition, the campus also has sports and recreation facilities which encourages all-round development of the students. Campus also provides a childcare facility for all students and staff to help them continue their studies and work while their babies are being taken care of. Kridangan, the creche, housed in the faculty building, is an asset on campus for employees of NCR Biotech Cluster, 
The spacious cafeteria in the campus serves hygienic, nutritious and delicious meals and beverages at reasonable cost. RCB also contributes towards creating resource for researchers from all over India and has engaged with institutions such as the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility in France towards this end. RCB is also involved with the UNESCO towards developing policy to ensure sustainable development at the global level and specifically in the Asian region. RCB is a young institute which is growing day by day with excellent opportunities for young people to make a career in the area of biotechnology. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Dr. Karthik and uh, I'm an assistant professor here at uh, Regional Center for Biotechnology, Faridabad. And uh, my team here works in the field of cell biology currently. So at the outset on behalf of all the RCB affiliates, I would like to thank the Science Setu team for giving us an opportunity to commemorate the unsung heroes in the field of Indian science. Also, I'd like to congratulate and thank Anushka and Ananya for putting this effort to showcase the life and achievements of Dr. Bibha Chaudhary, one of the pioneers in the field of Indian cosmic science. And uh, with that, uh, I'm ready to take up the uh, questions uh, uh, that you guys have put up today. So let me... Okay, I have a couple of questions here from a few of the viewers today, which is basically if RCB works in the field of cancer, and if so, to what extent they contribute basically to this field of science. So I'll try to uh, elaborate on this. So we have about six different uh, branches of biology at RCB, of which cancer biology is one such you know, area of research here in our campus. And uh, we have at least four uh, PIs focusing dedicatedly on cancer-related you know, research topics. So currently, uh, their research varies from understanding the basic cell biology of different cancers to understanding the underlying molecular mechanisms of each of these to way up to defining the therapeutic targets for cancer and for the developing strategies uh, to, in fact, deliver these you know, therapeutic drugs that are developed here and formulated by uh, different groups here at RCB. So apart from that, RCB also uh, has the state-of-the-art facility for you know, cancer genomics and tumor proteomic profiling, which makes us even more self-sufficient to carry out these uh, you know, uh, high standard research. And apart from that, we also have multiple collaborators and pharma partners outside the Institute who serve as, uh, you know, uh, as our partners in translating these findings of uh, each of these labs to reach the needy patients who actually suffer from the disease. So, what else? Okay, if uh, there's any more questions, I'm ready to take it. If not, uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Have a good day.